Hey guys, and welcome back to Mad About Skin. In today's video, we are reviewing the best-selling Korean skincare product, Winter Edition. Once every roughly three months, the biggest online retailers of Korean skincare release their best sellers list. Now, these lists don't change a lot month in, month out until we hit the cooler winter months, where it does appear that a lot of us switch up our skincare routine based on our seasonal skin's needs. It seems that people are really investing in calming and soothing ingredients, in with the hydrating toners and essences, and buying fewer sunscreen-based products. So I thought it'd be quite fun to take a look at the best-selling winter Korean skincare products to work out whether any of these are worthy of our place in our skincare routines. Sit back, relax, let's talk the best-selling Korean skincare winter edition. Now, before we get into today's video, I would like to ask the opinion of you guys, the viewers of the Mad About Skin channel, what your take is when it comes to Korean skincare content. In 2024, I've really rediscovered my love of Korean skincare, and I really enjoy sitting down and filming Korean skincare-themed videos. But I want to know, how much do you guys enjoy watching them? If you're someone that really enjoys Korean skincare content and wants to see it continue here on the channel, let me know by reaching down into the comments section below and leaving the thumbs up emoji. If you're someone that wants to see less Korean skincare content, then again, let me know by leaving the cross emoji in the comments. And that way, we can use the comment section almost a bit as a poll so I can see just exactly what you guys want to see when it comes to the channel. Whatever your thoughts on Korean skincare, if you want to support me as a sponsorship-free content creator, the very best way of doing that is by reaching down and giving the video a big thumbs up and a like. We're going to talk about all of these bestsellers, the good, the bad, and the mediocre. But whatever, these are my own thoughts, feelings, and opinions in a completely sponsorship and paid partnership-free way. I don't do sponsorships because I feel that turning down that coin helps me to retain my independence. So like I said, if you want to support me as a sponsorship-free content creator, liking any video you happen to enjoy is the very best way of doing it. Now, I've got a lot to get through in today's video, so I think it's time we cut that waffle and delve straight on in. So, Korean Skincare Winter Edition. Lots and lots has changed. And I filmed the equivalent summer video to this um, about six months ago. I'll find that video out and I'll link it up there. Definitely want to check out after this so you can see exactly what has changed in terms of the buying habits as we come into those cooler winter months. Now, I am well aware that not everyone watching this will be approaching winter. If you're watching from the Southern Hemisphere, you're about to embark on your summer warmth. And if you are, I know that this video might not be relevant now, but hopefully in six months time, we'll give you a little food for thought for your winter winter skincare purchases, getting ahead of the game. I want to say, if you're viewing from the Southern Hemisphere, I want to send you the world's biggest virtual hug and so, so much love. All the products mentioned, the good, bad, and the mediocre are linked in the description box below. So if you want to check out the price point, make a purchase, like I say, those links are there for your convenience. So I'm going to try and go through this in the order that we would apply these products to our skin. So starting out with cleansing, we have two cleansers which have made the bestseller list for winter. This is the Skin 1004 Madagascar Centella Light Cleansing Oil. And this is the Kate Secret Salt 1988 Cleansing Foam. This one has been around for years. This, this is a newcomer. So let's start with the oldie but a goodie. Um, I love this. As you can see, I'm two thirds of a weight through a bottle and I already have one on the shelf behind me ready for this one runs out. I love this cleansing oil. In fact, I'm gonna say of all the cleansing oils I've ever tried, this one, this one's just the best. It's great because it's calming and soothing. It's not packed full of lots of fragrance and irritating ingredients. It's great even for the most sensitive skin and it gets everything off. Couple of pumps of this, you apply it to your skin and it just melts away the day. You rinse it off with some lukewarm water and it disappears without a trace. No foam. It doesn't make, you know how some cleansing oils can make your eyes almost see a bit blurry for a little bit? We don't like that. None of that. This doesn't do any of that. It's just a really nice product. Super inexpensive, really well formulated, and I absolutely love it. My one critique of this, I would say, I'm going to call it out, because one critique would be the pump on this is a little keen. <laughs> you know, you put one pump and it, it can shoot out. So what I tend to do is cup my hand over it like that. That way you won't end up with cleansing oil all over your mirror, all over everywhere. So yeah, just a quick warning. I do find the pump on this a little bit enthusiastic. So you heard it here first. Maybe just make sure you're a little, be a little bit mindful of how you apply this one, but it's a really great and affordable product. Um, this this is a new newer addition to my skincare routine. I think this launched probably about four months ago, but I've really, really been enjoying it. If you're somebody that likes a really thick cleansing foam, 
this is for you. It comes out, I'll, put a little, I'll regret this because you'll see, if you see how it comes out, it's a very thick consistency. If you see how that, that, that is a thick cleanser. And I think this is great for winter. It might be a bit too much for those summer months, but for winter, it's nice because it's really rich. It's creamy, it's hydrating, and it does definitely get everything off. I'd say that this is so good, you probably don't need to do a double cleanse. If you just want a one and done, this is a really great product. Like I say, it is thicker, so it takes a while to work in, and you maybe have to do a couple of rinses to get it all off. But I think that's probably a good thing in winter. You know, it hydrates, it kind of does what it needs to do. Yeah, a really, really nice product. And great, like I say, for people who like a really thick cleansing foam. That, that one is so, so good. And um, as I guess we should have expected, when it comes to the cooler winter months, people do tend to go mad for mists, for toners, and for essences. I think a lot of people feel that the best way to treat like their winter skin keratin is to dial up the hydration. And honestly, that, that's a pretty good idea. In winter, especially if we have our heating on, the weather can be quite changeable. Our skin will generally get a little bit more dryness prone, a little bit more sensitivity prone too. So using a nice hydrating toner is a great one. One thing I'd say is don't, don't do too much. <laughs> Let's not do too much on the toner front. Um, I think having one or two toner and essences in your routine is more than enough. If you're almost overloading the skin by packing like multiple different tones on top of each other, I think you're going to get very limited results in terms of additional benefit, but you're going to be spending a lot of money. So keep it to one or two quality toners would be my personal recommendation. Um, and there's four toners that have made it into the top 10 bestsellers list. So let's start with the bestseller, I think, of all Korean skincare. Again, comes as no surprise. This was in the summer version of this video. This is the Turta Milk Skin Toner. Everyone loves it. Uh, Michaela Noguera, I think I pronounced that right, over on TikTok, fangirled about this and it sold out. It's got a lot of hype and celebrity endorsement behind it. Turta is a huge viral brand at the moment. This is a nice product. It, it genuinely is a nice product. You put it on the skin and you can see it's got a really nice, like milky consistency, as you'd expect. Sinks in, hydrates. Personally, if I'm being honest, I prefer the ordinary milky toner to this one. I think you get a little bit more hydration. You get a little exfoliation with the ordinary one. For me, that one just works a little bit better. This is good, but if you want my personal opinion, I think the ordinary one is a little bit better and that's the one that I'll be using in my evening skincare routine throughout winter. Um, the other like ones, this, this is a firm favorite of mine. This is the Holica Holica Good Sera Mist. This, one of my personal favorites. The mist on this, divine. Ceramide packed. I, this isn't a winter skincare product. This is just a universal product. I use this all summer long. I think I've used four or five bottles of this now. All summer long, I'll still be using it all winter long. It's great. If you want some extra calming, soothing, and hydration, a couple of spritz of this, divine. All I would say is I keep this in the fridge in summer to cool everything down. In winter, I don't do that. So I've literally taken it out of the fridge <laughs> to prepare for winter, and now it just sits on my vanity. So yeah, in summer, keep it in the fridge. In winter, you probably don't want that extra cooling. Um, now finally, for um, the toners, we have these two. Um, toner pads are big business at the moment. Um, the Korean skincare market has cornered the, the whole market in toner pads, and I think they're good. I'm just very mindful of the potential for waste. You know, those toner pads, these are the ones by Numbuzzi, which are the best seller of all of them. These are the Centella Relief Green Toner Pads. Great for calming, soothing, and freshening up the skin. When it comes to how these work, just see what's in here. They, they did come with a little like pin, uh, like tweezers to help you get them out. I lost them, um, as I always do. I always do that. Um, but they do come with tweezers, so you don't actually have to put your hand in. These are really nice. I would just say, I'm just always a bit mindful that they're quite wasteful because you use them um, and then you have to put them in the bin. Um, so I personally would prefer a toner like or a mist like this that you can spritz on, that you don't need an applicator. But these are really, really nice. And um, they're packed full of centella, so they're calming and soothing. And I'd say what they're best for are uh, people that don't cleanse on a morning. If you're someone like me that generally doesn't cleanse on a morning because my skin doesn't need it, um, but you want something to like freshen everything up, wiping over with one of these is a really great way of doing it. Freshens everything up, it's your toner and cleanser kind of all in one, and yeah, it works really well. It's not gonna budge makeup or sunscreen, so don't use it for your evening cleanse, but on a morning to freshen, just take away anything that's accumulated overnight. I think that's a really, really nice option. So yes, toner pads, 
as long as you're mindful with them and don't overuse them because of the potential for waste, I think are a quick, effective, and easy way of getting a little difference into your skincare routine. And these, actually, I'm glad these are the best seller because I'd say they're the best of all the ones on the market. The so one toner spray that I don't particularly like, but isn't the best seller, is this. This is the D'Alba First Serum Spray. Now, D'Alba are a huge brand. I think it'd be confusing because it's a, it's everything sourced from Italy, but it's a Korean skincare brand. It's, that for me is a little confusing. But this uses like truffle oil and things to give a calming and hydrating um, feel to the skin. It's got a lot of oils. You can actually see them suspended in this. So give it a really good shake before you apply it. Um, because that way it'll just get everything kind of emulsified in there. It's fine. I just don't like the smell. So this is packed packed full of fragrance. In fact, if you read the uh, ingredients list, there are seven different fragrant components in here. I think that's too much. In winter, when it's about calming and soothing, I don't think you need that much fragrance in your life. And this really is quite potent. If you like hydrating, if you like oils in your toners and in your essences, this, this is great. I just think for me, that fragrance, which is very like just very, very artificial, is, is a no for me. And it's surprising because they're Philosophy is very natural, very, you know, they, they go on the organic route with a lot of their products and then you're packing it full of artificial fragrance. That to me is a bit confusing. So that, this would be the one no from this bestseller list. If you like a lot of oils in your toner, that could work for you. But I think for most of us, it, it's a no. Now, a product which I've used and loved um, is this. This is the VT Riedel Shot. This is actually the collagen version. Now, it doesn't surprise me that this is the winter bestseller because collagen is great for boosting um, hydration. It's humectant, it plumps everything out. A nice product. Not actually my favorite of the VT Riedel line. I prefer, you see the ones up here. I love this one. This one is the vitamin C one. Um, I love the retinoid based one. I really like the PDRN one, great for anti-aging. I think all of those are great. This actually isn't my personal favorite. Um, it's great if you want like rejuicy, plump skin in winter. It will work really well, but I think the others will still give you that. So. Yeah, I'm not surprised this is the one people are reaching for for their winter skincare routine, but I still think stick with your summer versions. I, I think you'll get the same results, if not better. Yeah, it's good, but I think the brand has done better. If you want to see a full, by the way, if you want to see like a full rundown of the VT line, this and all the others, so you can kind of tell the differences between each one, choosing the right one for you, then I'll leave a link to that video up there. Check it out, because I do think it's right to choose the right one, the right version for what you're looking for in your skincare routine. And for me, the collagen one, great for plumping, great for hydration, but I, I think I'll just, I'll be sticking with the vitamin C one and the PDRM one. Those two are my favorites. I'll be using them in winter. I don't feel the need to switch to that collagen one. Now, one product that I definitely, 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 definitely um, have switched up in my winter skincare routine and my skin loves it is this. This is a new launch, actually. This is the Beauty of Josan Ground Rice and Honey Glow Mask. Now, honey, phenomenal for calming, soothing, anti-inflammatory. It's great for breakout prone skin. It's phenomenal. This, this is amazing. But what I love about this, it's a mask and it doesn't dry completely. I think this is my third tub of this now. I love it. It doesn't dry down like a crust. So when you apply this to the skin, let me show you, it goes on a bit like a sleeping mask, if that makes sense, if you can see it like that, but it doesn't dry down. So it's not gonna be one of those products that goes like a crust and sucks all of the moisture out of your skin. What it actually does is just impart some hydration, some plumping, and it really does help to get your glow game on point. So if you're someone that wants to boost radiance in winter, but you don't wanna use a lot of harsh actives, get this. I actually use it three times a week. Um, they recommend you leave it on between 10 and 20 minutes. I tend to put it on, go in the bath, and when I come out, it's still soft to the touch. It's not like wearing a zombie mask. It's more like, it's just gentle. It's great. I think this is a real winter skincare staple that just about everybody, everybody could get their hands on. And um, one thing I'll call out with this one, it's not vegan. So if you're vegan or living a plant-based lifestyle, this probably isn't for you, um, which is absolutely fine. I do like to call that out so we can just make sure everyone can work out what's right for them. But for everyone else, I think this is the one product of all of these that I would say, get it. If you're in doubt of any of these, get this. I think this could be your winter skincare staple and give you so, so much great benefit. 
Now we're on to a couple of final things which are moisturizers. So um, we've got two moisturizers here. Um, both of them, I kind of understand why they're in the winter bestsellers, but I have mixed feelings on. So this is a product that I definitely really enjoy. This is the VT Daily Spotless Care Toning Cream. Um, this actually has a ridiculously long name. I will, like I said, I've linked everything in the description so you don't have to type this out. This is great for people who are still looking to treat hyperpigmentation in winter. I said earlier that winter skin generally comes with more irritation, more sensitivity, and so the harder actives that we use during summer might no longer be applicable in winter. But we don't want to completely turn off that tap when it comes to fading hyperpigmentation. This is a great option. So it's packed full of humectants, it's calming and soothing, but it's got tranexamic acid, glutathione, niacinamide, and a range of antioxidants. This will genuinely help fade any hyperpigmentation, dark spots, and discoloration, but do so in a really gentle way. So I'd say for like the winter hyperpigmentation maintenance phase, if that's the thing, and this is a really great option. It goes on like a rich cream. This, the only thing I'd say is it's got a cap on it here that is a bit like a toothpaste cap. It's giving Colgate vibes. That's my one criticism of this product. But actually in terms of how it works, it's a really nice cream, very lightweight, and this won't cause any sensitivity or irritation, but will definitely help you kind of do something towards your hyperpigmentation in winter. Um, whilst a lot of us will see our hyperpigmentation naturally fade in winter, less sun around, that less sun exposure will cause less hyperpigmentation in general. I always think don't give up on your hyperpigmentation treatments completely, because if you treat now, it's kind of setting your skin up for success when summer rolls around next year. This, this is a great option for maintaining the results you've seen. And um, finally on the best sellers, this, this is the Toridon Dive In Soothing Cream. This whole line is viral, the Dive In line. Everybody's going mad for it. Personally, I think Toridon do some great skincare. I prefer the other lines. I like their Cell Amazing Firming line. I really like their Vitamin C range. They're really good. This Dive In line is probably my least favorite of their lines, but this is a good cream. So. This is designed to be like a super hydrating and moisturizing lightweight cream. It, it's nice, it comes in a gel, I'll just take it all off the top here. Comes in a real nice gel base and is packed full of hyaluronic acid and great humectants. It's a nice lightweight option, but I would say in winter, if you are super oily and acne prone, this could work really well. If you're more dryness prone, you're gonna need more. Your skin won't be drenched using this. You'll need to apply something on top of it. So for us oily folk, this could be a great winter moisturizer. For everybody else, use this as almost like a primer moisturizer and then put a more occlusive product on top. That's how I would use it. It's fine, it's nice. And it's if you remember way, 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 way back to the early days of the channel where I always recommended the Blythe Pressed Serum, one of my favorite moisturizers, if you remember that, if you were around for those days and remember that, let me know in the comments section below that you were. Um, yes, if you remember those, I love that serum, it was great. This is a nice equivalent without all the fragrance. So for that, I love it. I just think for most people, this is a win. This is more of a summer skincare win. Winter, I think most of us will need a little bit more, but it does feel great. And if, like me, you've got super oily skin, th this could be a really great option for you. So there we have it, a rundown, a whistle-stop tour of the best-selling Korean skincare winter edition. Were you surprised by anything on this list? Have you tried any of these products? Share your thoughts, feelings, and opinions. And um, I would say it's a pretty good list. I enjoyed and would approve of most of the products on here. Not all of them, but most of them. I'd say the one product that stands out for me is this Beauty of Joseon mask. Get this. This this is the best, um, but I do also love the other products. So yeah, hopefully this gives you a little food for thought when it comes to switching things out for your own winter skin needs. Wherever you are in the world, guys, stay safe, stay well, and love your skin. Take care. Bye.